Let's do a calculation involving mixtures of gases and the ideal gas law. Now when you have a mixture, each gas behaves like it has the whole volume to itself. So if you have a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen, you can calculate the pressure of the oxygen all by itself using the whole volume, the pressure of nitrogen by itself using the whole volume, and then the total pressure will be the sum of those two pressures. Each gas will exert what's called a partial pressure. So a partial pressure of oxygen plus the partial pressure of nitrogen in a mixture is the total pressure. Each gas behaving like the other gas is not even there. It's occupying the entire volume by itself. So here's an example. A tenth of a mole of oxygen and half an atmosphere of nitrogen in the same flask. Let's mix those together and then pull out a small amount, 0.02 moles and see how the partial pressures react after that. So, let's figure out the partial pressure of oxygen in this flask to start with. I can do that from the number of moles, the temperature, and the size of the flask. Apply the ideal gas law. Now there's also nitrogen in the flask, but it doesn't matter. The oxygen behaves like it has the whole flask to itself. So let's ignore the nitrogen and figure out what the pressure would be if there were only, only oxygen in there. So if there were only oxygen, it would be nRT over the entire volume, and that's the tenth of a mole, the temperature in Kelvin, and the entire flask. That gives us a pressure of 2.4 atmospheres of oxygen. Now the nitrogen is also in there exerting half an atmosphere of pressure. So you have two gases, each exerting a partial pressure. The total pressure is the sum of the two. So I can take the total pressure in the flask is the partial pressure from the oxygen and the partial pressure from the nitrogen. The total pressure is just the pressure that each gas exerts. So that's 2.9 atmospheres. Now another way to think about this is the total pressure comes from the oxygen and the nitrogen together the fraction of oxygen molecules that exert the pressure is a fraction of the total pressure. So if I take the fraction of oxygen molecules, multiply it by the total pressure, I'll get the partial pressure of oxygen. Another way to say that is the partial pressure of oxygen is the mole fraction of oxygen times the total pressure. So the mole fraction is the number of oxygen particles relative to the total number of particles. So I can write that like this, the number of oxygen particles over the total particles, oxygen plus nitrogen. That's the mole fraction. The mole fraction from this expression is also the partial pressure of oxygen over the total pressure. So I can figure out the fraction of oxygen particles from the relationship between the pressures. Oxygen exerts a fraction of the total pressure based on the fraction of the total molecules that oxygen makes up. So the partial pressure of oxygen is 2.4 atmospheres. The total pressure is 2.9 atmospheres. So the fraction of the pressure that comes from oxygen, 2.4, gives you the mole fraction in the sample. So the fraction of the molecules that are oxygen are 0.83. So about 80%, 0.83 of the molecules are oxygen. So if 0.83 of the molecules are oxygen, about 83% are oxygen, then the rest are nitrogen. The sums of the mole fractions have to add up to one. So that means about 0.17 mole fraction of nitrogen. So in any sample, there's about 80% oxygen and about 20% nitrogen. So any sample I pull out of that flask, I'll have about eight oxygen particles and two nitrogen particles. Their ratio are always gonna be about 8 to 2, 80%, 20%. So if I take out a sample of particles, I'm going to remove 
O2 moles of particles, what happens to the total pressure? Well, let's just calculate from the ideal gas law. If I remove 0.02 moles of particles, that corresponds to 0.48 atmospheres, just PV equals nRT, to get a pressure corresponding to 0.02 moles. So the pressure is going to go down by 0.48 atmospheres when I remove 0.02 moles of gas. So the total pressure is going to be reduced by around half an atmosphere. The mole fraction in the flask stays the same. Every sample of gas is still going to have about eight oxygen particles and two nitrogen particles. They're always going to be in that same ratio. So mole fractions remain unchanged. That's key. So now, if I know the pressure goes down by about half an atmosphere, well, the total pressure used to be 2.9. I remove 0.02 moles of gas. That corresponds to 0.48 atmospheres. The total pressure goes down to 2.4 atmospheres. So now there's 2.4 atmospheres, but I know the mole fraction of oxygen is still 0.83. So I know which fraction of this pressure is exerted by the oxygen molecules. The pressure exerted by the oxygen molecules is the mole fraction of oxygen molecules times the total pressure. The new total pressure, 2.4 atmospheres. The mole fraction of oxygen, still 0.83. So the fraction of the new total pressure from the oxygen is 1.9 atmospheres. So this is a long series of calculations at every step, we've kept in mind that partial pressures add up to give you total pressures. And if you have mixtures of gases, each gas behaves as if it has the whole volume to itself. So you apply the ideal gas law to each gas and then add up those pressures to get total pressures. You can also take mole fractions, multiply them times total pressures to get partial pressures. So this is how we'll use the ideal gas law and our understanding of how gases mix to do ideal gas law mixture calculations.